Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and with me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. What's, on, what's going on, Brian? Not much, Pablo. You had a good holiday. Yeah, man, it was quiet. I, I always think of... When somebody asked me that, I, I, I was thinking of uh, Jason Statham in The Transporter when he told the, 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 the Asian uh, character, I like my mornings quiet. So quiet. <laughs> I like quiet. You know, um, not a lot of news uh, coming out of uh, the industry with regards to the MCU, DC. The biggest thing that happened in DC was with Wonder Woman 84. Um, but regarding the industry, we got some some news regarding regarding MGM trying to sell everything. Right. We got. um Warner Brothers saying Dune will be actually will actually go to the, the to, to the theaters, right? Because of all that's going on, there's a lot of threats of litigation and all this other stuff because of what they did. Um, and now they're sort of uh, saying all the stuff that we said we we're going to put out, not all of it may be put out on HBO Max and actually may go back to the theater. Similar to Godzilla. Godzilla, there was a situation happening with Netflix. Warner Brothers said no. And now Legendary is trying to get in, um, get that same sort of deal with them. And then we'll get into some Zack Snyder stuff. Always, you know, the Zack Snyder segment. And uh, he says that he feels DC movies can't be and shouldn't be like Marvel movies. I say, why not? But I digress. Um, then we get into some MCU news. Um, Kevin Feige is supposed to be doing a presentation for New Year's where we might, and I hope so, because of where he's doing it. We might get a trailer for Shang-Chi. I'm confident of that, I hope. And uh, we might get a trailer for Eternals because, you know, that if you saw our previous show, you know, I was upset that they didn't show anything, but this may be the day that they do it. Um, and then we'll also get into a quick discussion about all the Spider-Man news that's been coming out regarding Tobey Maguire, uh, Andrew Garfield joining and everyone else in prior uh, Spider-Man films joining, not joining, but joining the MCU, not necessarily joining the, the, the Spider-Man 3. All we know is that we're hearing their names and their possible connection, but nothing confirmed yet. Um, and so we want to see if people are actually thinking that we're going to get a Spider-Man multiverse movie in Spider-Man 3, which I believe wholeheartedly we are not. What we're going to possibly get is the setup for that. And we'll get a little bit into that um, later on. So, industry news. MGM, one of the oldest movie studios in operation, is currently exploring a sale of all of its assets, including James Bond and his vast film library. Brian. Is this not what we have spoken about previously? Have we not mentioned this before? Talk. To yeah, me. no, I, I actually, I actually had guessed Paramount would be the studio that would be first to sell. Uh, but the idea is the same, which is if your IP is limited and your scale is limited in this new order that we live in, you are an asset to be acquired. You're not really a standalone entity. And so yeah. you mentioned it. James Bond is the asset. I mean, MGM is the studio, but James Bond is the asset. That's what's being acquired here. So yeah. you not only get no time to die, but this Everything is else. a franchise that is constantly recast, rebooted. It goes on, it goes on. So this is what you're paying for. And yeah, like I said, MGM, I can't think of any other franchise, major franchise IP that they have going right now and have had going over the last 10, 20 years. So you know, Paramount, obviously, Mission Impossible is their yeah. sort of big, big IP, but um, similar idea here. So I'm not surprised at all the longer this pandemic drags on and 
Um, the harder it's been to kind of get productions off the ground, let alone get new films and, and shows making money in the way that, yeah. that studios are used to, not surprised at all to see studios looking at strategic options. I guess, you know, with the talk of vaccines and things moving along in that direction, people getting vaccinated and all that other stuff, perhaps brings a little hope to some studios who have assets, who, you know, usually make their money with theatrical releases, you know, and it's still unsure whether in the next year or so that those 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 releases are gonna get the same sort of numbers that we're used to seeing with big movies um mgm you know has been holding on to no time to die for a minute right uh and they're just not making any money they're losing money yeah exactly so yeah. you know this all makes sense um brian called it you know some weeks ago, you know, he thought it was Paramount, but now it actually turns out that MGM is the one having talks. And who knows who else is having talks? They just haven't said anything yet. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, because this is something I, I, I'm sure is not the first time that, you know, people have wanted to buy the franchise, right? Um, so... I guess we'll see in the next few months if something happens with uh, this IP for MGM and 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 the future of, of the Bond series and where it goes. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, so let us let us know in the comments section below if you're interested in in in, in, in do, do you agree with what we're saying as to James Bond going elsewhere, the whole thing, and other studios doing the same thing with their IP. Let us know in the comment section below. Warner Brothers, after man, it, it sucks, they must have felt good when they announced <laughs> we're releasing everything we were going to release in 2021 onto HBO Max. All the fans like me were like, Yay, right? With King Kong, Matrix 4, all this stuff, and now after a few days of really seeing what transpired. And how it was done they're sort of pulling back on what they said dune is uh dune may go back into the, th the theaters because of you know the director went in on them um investors went in on them and certain deals that were made in the back end with other films and other talent they're like saying, like, so what about us? And perhaps even in the contracts, because I heard similar conversation with the movie that um, Will Smith is supposed to do. He's supposed to be uh, Zare Serena and and King Richard. Richard. King Richard. Huh? Yes. Yeah. It says in the contract, this has to go into the theaters, so they can't release it on onto their platform. Well, well, hang on one second. They mm -hmm. are releasing the movie in theaters at the yes. same. They're just putting it on the streaming service the same day it goes. And so technically they would not be in violation of a contract like that. Because the movie is going to theaters on day. True, 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 true. But again, let's see because of the vaccine if 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 some of that stuff or that talk goes away. But Dune, we said it last time. I think we said it on our last show. The director thinks that this may be or may become a franchise. We don't really see it that way. Brian, is this a mistake? I mean, obviously, monetarily, the potential of it making money in the theaters. Who knows? But who knows when they release it in the theaters? We don't know. Is this a mistake? What do you think? Oh, man. I mean, Warner Brothers. <laughs> I think Warner Brothers is the, uh, they are the, I think they are the studio of the creative mind behind Looney Tunes. And that kind of feels like the land that we're in right now. Yeah. Um, I, you know, my, my, the struggle I have is on the one hand, this, this plan clearly wasn't vetted with all the people they needed to clear it with. Yeah. Before they went with it. Yeah. I still think 
they're doing the right thing in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And I don't think it's wrong because we see it with Disney as well. I don't think it's wrong to have a view that certain films and certain properties belong in different places. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think where you start to get into trouble though is when you're 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 structuring deals very differently around that idea. So it's like if you're writing a $10 million check to Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins on the one hand, you got to know that elite Everybody films else. like Danny Villeneuve were like, you got to take care of my people. Yeah. Not just me. You got to take care of my crew, my cast. Yeah. So that's where it gets a little bit, a little bit dicey. That being said, so to, to understand what's going on with Dune, you know, IP comes in different forms. So we talk about like Star Wars IP, Marvel IP. That is stuff that is, it exists already in the universe. The other kind of IP is what comes out of the mind of good filmmakers. So Warner Brothers has a close relationship with Christopher Nolan, Denny Villeneuve, two of the brightest minds, certainly in science fiction action out there today. Yeah. What this is telling me is they re- understand or believe they cannot afford to have him take his ideas to another studio, which is what would happen, apparently, yeah. if they roll through with this. So, you know, you mentioned the Dune franchise. I don't know that he was, he, he's not really a franchise filmmaker. Like if you look at his track record, Blade Runner 2049, that was a one-off. Sicario, he did not come back to do the sequel. He did not make that movie thinking there was gonna be a sequel. Um, Prisoners, Arrival, these are one-off movies. Mm-hmm. He imagined Dune as a two-part movie because the book is so dense it's so long and it's so thick so i think for him it's two parts and he's using part two as leverage against the studio to get what he wants here and they're gonna looks like it give him what it wants but as you and i have discussed this is not an mcu film i was never convinced this was gonna do massive box office i i'm not still not convinced that the global audience for this is as enormous as he and the studio seem to think it might be. We shall see this play out. We shall see this play out. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I speak to a lot of, you know, comic book fans and, and fans of movies. And Dune is one of those films that rarely comes up, you know. Um, it certainly comes up as a movie they sold back in the day. I remember seeing it, but in terms of it being memorable, it wasn't. So I don't know what it will it will do now. Um, let's see. We, we, we're going to see this play out. I mean, the trailer has an amazing cast, but oh, yeah. I don't know that the trailer, the look of the trailer, would make the casual moviegoer say, "I have to get to the theater to see that opening weekend." I mean, you got Jason Momoa, you got Oscar Isaacs, but Oscar Isaacs doesn't really count. Jason Momoa, who certainly draws people to go to see him. Uh, I mean, Timothy Chalamet is, you know, given his awards credentials as a young actor, is a big name. I mean, Rebecca Ferguson is a personal favorite of mine from the Mission Impossible franchise. She's she's awesome. Yeah. Um, but. To me, like I said, I just it feels a lot like Blade Runner 2049. I think the reviews could be good and it could look visually stunning, and we could wake up and say, Look, this cost 250 million dollars, and the global box was 400. And that's like, meh, you know, I I wouldn't be shocked if that was Godzilla versus Kong is another film that possibly may go into the theaters because of how big it is. Um, originally from, from what I've heard is that they were going to sell that to Netflix for about 250 mil Warner Brothers nixed that and now Legendary is in talks with Warner Media working out that same sort of situation or possibly it may be released in the theaters who knows but again is I'm playing along the theme that, you know, you said this and now because of the pressure 
<laughs> you're not gonna possibly do this. I for one don't listen. I'm the same excitement that I have for Wonder Woman eighty four to come out. Despite it coming out, it, whether it would have been on the theaters or uh, on streaming platform, I'm going to watch it when it comes out. Kong versus Godzilla, you kidding me? So no matter which way they deliver it, I'm going to go watch it. If it's in the theaters only, I may think twice, depending on what's going on in the world, right? But if it's streaming, I'm watching it. So what do you think, Brian? Is 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 this gonna go is this gonna go back into the theaters? Is it gonna be on the platform? Are they gonna put it exclusively on the platform if they sell it to uh 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 HBO Max? Talk to me. This is supposed to be a summer 2021 release original. Well, actually, I guess it was supposed to be a summer 2020 release originally, and now it's 2021, but I Again, it's it's a different deal structure for a different movie. It's like now, in this case, the studio, the studio Legendary is interested in, in guaranteeing a box office, effectively. That's what a $250 million fee does, right? So yeah. you take 250 plus whatever this movie generates, and now you have revenues to pay your crew and your cast that have back-end requirements and your director and all. That's what this is about. But again, it's a different structure. It's like now we're dealing like, okay, that's different than Wonder Woman. It's different than um dune and like who knows what they're gonna wind up i mean i'm sure you know james gunn's made his feelings known i'm sure he knows he's got an asset in suicide squad they're gonna have to deal with that that's the part about this i i I don't like but i will say like if they were if they were gonna hold one back for theater only this is the one i would pick because to me i don't i mean this type of movie more than the majority of what makes a movie like this spectacular is the yeah. size of the screen and, yeah. the, and the and the quality of the audio that only a movie theater mm, can yeah. give you yeah. i would be frustrated <laughs> that i couldn't see it you yeah. know in the summer of 2021 if we if the assuming that you know we're not back to normal yeah. normal life at that point but there's a part of me that it, it would almost be like you know let's say we got it let's say world was safe and we got on a plane tomorrow and they said, guess what? We've got an early preview of Godzilla versus Kong. I wouldn't watch it yeah. on the plane. Because I'd be like, why am I watching this on the plane? <laughs> and I want to watch this in a big screen where I can yeah. really enjoy the power of, yeah. of, of this. So yeah, part of I, me almost hopes they do hold this one back. But again, I just, I'm, I'm confused by the just seeming lack of cohesion in the way they're dealing with all of these situations. So I really have no idea what the outcome's going to be. Which I don't know if you read an article uh, about uh, the M- Disney or Marvel creating these contracts. Um, it's sort of like a. This is what's going to happen in case this. They sort of it's like a one uh, size fits all sort of thing, depending on film and what's going to go in the theater, so that there aren't any. You know, it, it it sort of talks to that that cohesiveness mm-hmm. that, that you're referring to that that Warner Brothers lacks in doing these side things, and there's you know there's just chaos, chaos pretty much. Um, if this would have been a normal situation, you know, no pandemic, they probably goes business as usual, and we continue to get this this sort of these deals happening. But now. Look at the message you're in. So, and it's not. It's and I'm not suggesting that every every film or every filmmaker should be valued the same. Clearly, they should not. The the budget and the scales of these are different. But what I'm saying is the philosophy behind how you're taking care of the people. Mm -hmm. The DNA of that can be the same. I mean, it's like okay, you know, if we if we have a budget a film that's budgeted at a you know 100 to 200 million dollars then this is how we deal with it if it's budgeted 30 to 50 million dollars this is how we deal with it and that way all the filmmakers who are in those categories aren't looking around and saying well, what did he get what does she get <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. you know side deals in any industry never lead to a happy workplace yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah. think you're seeing that here. yeah yeah good point good point uh tell let us know what you think in the comment section below do you think Godzilla, would you prefer to see Godzilla and King Kong in theaters? I would. But if it came on the platform, 
I just get a put some speakers, make it as theater, close to theater experience as I possibly can to see that because Godzilla versus Kong is a sort of movie that you definitely see in theaters and nowhere else. Um, just some time ago, I read a quick article <clears throat> regarding Zack Snyder and he feels that DC movies can't be and shouldn't be done like Marvel movies. As I stated earlier, why not, right? Why not do it the way Marvel is doing? It clearly works. Right? Are you saying don't be like Marvel? Shouldn't be done like Marvel because you don't want to be like Marvel? That's childish to me if you're in the business, right? You want to, you're in the business of making money. Uh, but I get that you want to have the freedom to do whatever you want with these characters and and and, and how you sort of uh, go about it, telling stories and stuff. But again, you know, doing it this way doesn't create that 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 feeling of wanting more. And because if you do a dope movie, you probably get a trilogy, and then that's it. There's no connection to these are the characters right but in the comics it works all the time and this is what the the universe is built on pretty much why can't you do that what has already been put in front of you for all these years why can't you do it and he says um we're gonna we're gonna like have this world where there's all these storylines going on at the same time and i always thought that that was dc's strength I don't know what to say to that, man. I really don't because why wouldn't you want? It's not. I don't think he's knocking the way Marvel has done it. They have. They've been doing it this way, and it's worked out for them. And there's a obviously at Marvel there is a certain way they want things done, where it doesn't allow that sort of freedom that they would want to do. Um, with a particular character, we sent you know, hence Edgar Wright and, and Scott Derrickson. You know, there were some differences there, and they had to part ways. But yet, the fans, you know, at the end of the day, we don't, you know, we watch the movies and we enjoy the movies. That back end stuff is the result that we're, we're is what we're what we care about. The result. I don't know, Brian, but Zack Snyder still is doing, obviously he's doing what he wants to do and, and, and it's fine, but doing what you want to do with a property that really doesn't belong to him. It belongs to us, the fans that paid to watch and paid to read. That's what the, you know, if you're going to do some compelling story, do them, right? But let that have that cohesion. I mean, in the comments, they do it. Again, why can't you do it here? Tell me what you think, Brian. I get upset about this crap. Well, hard for me to assess how much Zach speaks for all of DC at this point. I think that's sort of TBD. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a case of you kind of, in my opinion at least, maybe fixated on the wrong thing so a couple points so number one is if i take a sports analogy if you, have, if you have a team or a program that goes out and wins a championship or multiple championships do you think the other teams in that league sit there and say the one thing we can't do is do what they did to try to win i'm just saying has any sports team in any league done that no, it's the opposite, right? They look at what worked for that team. Yeah. And apply and it to their approach, style. Their approach. And they say, what can we learn from that that we can improve and we can add something that's unique on our side? So that's number one. Yeah. Philosophical. Number two is, I think, focusing on the Marvel way versus the DC way misses the most obvious point of all this, which is the movies and the characters the movies and the products that we connect the most with are the ones that bring the characters from the pages onto the screen most successfully. So your focus should be 
what is the essence of the character I'm trying to tell a story about? Now, guess what? As we know, in the history of the comics, Marvel and DC have copied each other from the dawn of time. <laughs> so guess what? They all had the same kind of characters. Yeah, so yeah. no matter what you do, you're going to be looking at a version of a character that exists in the other place. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. As we've seen, the comics can sell. People love, you know, versions of them on both sides. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, the, the focus should be what is this character about? What are the elements that I can use to connect the stories that have been written to the audience that I want to receive it? And, you know, like, so we would agree that the, the one area where DC has been vastly superior to Marvel since the beginning has been animation. Yeah. So if I said to you, okay, I'm the new head of Warner We're the new heads of Warner Brothers and we're just like, you know what? Let's not overthink this. We're just going to go to the animated library and we're going to live action the entire animated library. You think someone's going to come into the room and say, well, hey, 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 wait a minute. Disney's already doing that. It's the <laughs> Lion King. Little Mer You can't do that. They're already doing that. If I do a good job with all of those movies in the DC animated universe, making them live, do you think the audience actually cares? No, no. It just doesn't matter. There's room for both. This idea that there's only room for one yeah. a certain way yeah. is, I, I don't get it. I'll never get it. Because at the end of the day, the, the, people like you and me who are more versed in that stuff, we're aware of it. The average moviegoer doesn't look at it that way. Yeah. They just look at it. If, is the, does the movie look cool? Does it look yeah. good? Do I want to go spend two hours and $20 to, to, to see it if the theaters are open? Or if, yeah. do I want to buy it on, on, uh, on, on iTunes or streaming? I, I just, I don't get his fixation with it. I don't get the studio's fixation with focusing on what is Marvel doing versus what should we be doing yes. to maximize our potential. Listen, I agree with you 100%. And it's, just, it's a sentiment that we've sort of uh, 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 um, been saying for pretty much for, for how long we've been doing this show, even before you were here, Brian. We've been talking the same thing. And you have Zach supporters or DC supporters who don't care. I, I don't know. I don't know if they don't care, but they don't seem to mind this route. Right. And come on, if you, if you tell, if you got a bunch of DC fans who like Zack Snyder's films, who cares, right? You put them in then. You show them um, the Tower of Babel. You show them the, the White Martians uh, storyline. This book, actually. Grant Morrison. Read this. You're going to tell me that you wouldn't want to see that on film? Instead, you're going to... Instead, you're going to get somebody like Zach who wants to tear it apart and do his own version that may or may not work. I'll back Zach on one aspect of this, which I think is he wouldn't say it in the quotes in the article you sent, but I think he is speaking from the personal experience because he makes a comment about you want to lead with the filmmaker. I do agree with that. Um, and I think, you know, with what happened to his just with what happened to Justice League, he is right in the standpoint of you can't come over the top as a studio and say, okay, you, you made this movie. Now let's, let's marvel it up. Like that doesn't make any sense, yeah, right? Yeah, Which is effectively yeah. what, what, by bringing in Joss Whedon, they effectively did yeah, that. Yeah, they were yeah. like, we, we want this to look and sound more like the Avengers than what Zach submitted. I will back him on that. Like, yeah. I think that's silly. Like you shouldn't, the decision about tone has to be made at the beginning and you have to trust the filmmaker to deliver on that. On and that. it's not always going to work. I mean, yeah. quite frankly, yeah, it hasn't always worked for the MCU. I mean, as we know, they've gotten away with a few films that are not, you know, we look back on it. We're like, eh, those are not so great, but yeah, yeah. Um, I will support him on that idea. But I just, again, I just think philosophically fans don't care as long as the, the end product is, is, is done well. And I will say this, the other thing that I think Warner Brothers has gotten into a little bit of trouble with and DC has gotten a, the best franchises 
in my opinion, are written and built on the idea of making one good film. You can drop as many Easter eggs as you want mm-hmm. and have as much optionality as you want. But when I hear, usually when you hear talk of like, oh, here comes this film that this is going to launch a series of six or seven. Go look at the track record of how many of those make it to six or seven. Yeah. It's usually when you focus on what's in front of you and you may, like if Iron Man one had been the only MCU film, it would have had the teaser for Avengers, obviously at the very end. And that mm-hmm. would have gone nowhere. Yeah. But that movie could stand alone. Yeah. It could stand alone. If that was the only film we got, that could be a good standalone movie. Without that end credit. Yeah. Star Wars, the original Star Wars, that they never, it, the story wasn't over, but it kind of had an ending and yeah. had a new hope. Oh, that's yeah. The only one we ever got. Yeah. That would be a great movie. So that's my point is like when you focus on making the great first movie, that's usually when you get a chance to make two and three. When you're focused on where I'm going to be in movie number three and four, yeah. that usually leads to disappointment yeah. in the round one. Yeah. Tell us what you think in the comment section, man, because. This is obviously not going to go away because we still have Zack Snyder's Justice League coming out on HBO Max in a few months, two and a half months, something like that. Two and a half, three months, yeah. And if you want to know what we've said about that, go to the other shows. I'll probably put a a tag up there somewhere so you guys can click on it and watch it. Um, We speak extensively about um, what Zack Snyder has to accomplish with this film because there's a lot of talk that has been been spoken. Um, and again, this is all him. This is all him. This is what he wanted to show you. And speak. I want to speak to something you said previously, Brian. Um, you know, studios, Warner Brothers especially, are famous for coming in and destroying the film uh, 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 a director's vision and and wanting to do this instead of what they originally had intended patty jenkins third act apparently wasn't her idea for, for wonder woman one the first one the third act it was supposed to be something different but warner brothers said no Justice League. Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Warner Brothers. They're the worst, yo. (laughs) They have to to trust the talent. What they are are is we see it. We see it with how they're... We talked about it. We see it with how they're handling the HBO Max situation. Mm -hmm. They, They seem to have a tougher time just sticking to the plan and trusting in the vision. Yeah. You know, the, the whole Suicide Squad thing became about because of that trailer where they used Bohemian Rhapsody. If you believe the story, that that's the industry story, right? Is that trailer tested so well yeah. that they went and changed the entire film to kind of try to go along with the mood of that trailer. Yeah. I'm like, there's no precedent for that working that I'm aware of. Yeah. So again, it's just, it's very reactionary. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that they had any say because it doesn't look like because Todd Phillips doesn't look like the type of dude that's gonna let somebody come into his film and change things. Do you think they had some sort of say with the Joker? No. It made a and I don't think so. I gotta be I don't think Joaquin Phoenix does it if he sensed that they would. I think there was some real protection there probably put in place at the outset by Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix and some of the people saying, look, if we're going to do this, we're going all the way with this. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree. And I hope it's the same with um, the Batman. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. I think it is with that. I think James Gunn's suicide squad is going to be, he, he, I don't think he's going to have the same big brother watching over him that David Ayer did. Yeah. So, so we definitely got some movies that potentially may not have any studio meddling and we might get great stuff with suicide squad the batman um um i think that's it 
I think that's it for um, uh, movies like DC movies where the studio may not get involved because of the people who are already in charge of it and are going to deliver something. I think that's going to be amazing. The Batman, you cannot tell. I'm telling you, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it again. I've made another video and I didn't put it out. Why? Because I'm waiting for it to happen. So I can say in two tw- in 2019, <laughs> this is what I said. <laughs> Batman is going to break all types of records. The Batman is going to break all types of records. Tell us what you think about Zack Snyder and his thoughts on how DC movies should be made. Uh, Let us know if you disagree or agree with what we said. Um, The MCU, uh, I think uh, New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, I'm not sure what time of day is going to be presented, but Kevin Feige Feige has a presentation in China where we might actually, and it makes sense, man, and it makes sense for it to be the case, where we might actually get a Shang-Chi or Shang-Chi, as uh, Kevin Feige says. That's how he says it, Shang-Chi. A trailer for this character, finally, because we didn't get anything on Investor's Day, although, you know, we know the movie wrapped. No trailer. The Batman, 25% done. An amazing trailer. So they got something. They just choosing their, I guess, environment or platform on, on, on where to do it and how. So, and we also uh, might get a trailer for Eternals on that day as well. Brian, do you think this is a possibility? Absolutely. I mean, Investor Day is the wrong place for them to be debuting trailers at the end of a four-hour presentation for feature films. It's They need a bigger stage. They need a, a stage exclusive to them. But it makes perfect sense, right? You have these streaming shows going live on Disney+. Plus. You want to be able to integrate new footage from other things into that, for sure. You mentioned the China locale. This movie... Shang-Chi is clearly catering to that market, which is, you know, for the right film, is a bigger box office than the U.S. now. Mm. I mean, we haven't even gotten so... I mean, even the Eternals, we got a leaked promotional image. We haven't even gotten so much as a picture of the actual <laughs> characters. Yeah, this everything has been... been... One of the great, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. sleight of hand, massive production. It's like it never happened. Like, I don't even, you know... I mean, they kept Luke. I mean, we were talking about they kept Luke, they kept Mark Hamill secret for a year on the set of Mandalorian. Like I, they kept this entire film secret. From the art of movie making is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely, I think it's a real possibility, and it makes perfect sense. Look, you got a summer 2021 launch date still on the calendar. Obviously, that could move with with the, what's going on with the pandemic. But if that, January, February, you know, Super Bowl, this presentation, those are the right forms to uh, yeah. to start to put out this kind of footage yeah i agree um i can't wait man i'm hoping because we did a a shang chi spotlight i haven't released it yet because i'm waiting for the right moment because nobody's really talking about shang chi you know why because nobody there's no trailer there's nothing there's the same images right and images of people look like they took out their phone and sneaked the picture in and then posted it and leaked we haven't gotten nothing this is the time for them to do it i hope they do it um, uh, cause we've been waiting for this, something for a while already and they wrapped already. So, and, and Eternals is, I don't know if they're done with that. Are they done with Eternals yet? They're done. They've been done for a while, I believe. So it's like, well, remember, actually, I know they're done because the original release date was November of this year. Uh, yeah, again, there you go. You know, so we should see something, especially for new years. It, that sounds about right. That sounds about the right time to do it. Um, let us know what you think. Are you do you think um, Shang Chi is the trailer is going to come out in the Eternals? Let's see. Um, let's see if that happens, man. I, I get excited when I think about the possibility of that being the case, man. Because I've been waiting for Shang Chi for a minute. And Eternals, I'm curious. I'm excited and curious about Eternals. As, as I said in the past in our previous shows. Um, Eternals, I'm looking forward to for the history that it'll provide and as well as the connection that it'll have to the X-Men. And that movie is going to be very, 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 very important. Good comment on that. Mm-hmm. One of the stranger announcements last year was the announcement that Barry Jenkins, um, who, who 
who directed uh, Moonlight, which, mm-hmm. which won an Oscar a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was Beale Street was what he directed after that. So, you know, really top filmmaker was mm-hmm. going to be making a Lion King prequel live action movie that came out of nowhere. And I was like, yeah. what is he doing? He had a quote the other day, which ties into Eternals, where he said yeah. a lot of what convinced him to do that movie was that he talked to Chloe Zhao and Chloe Zhao said she had such a good experience working with Disney and like the freedom that Marvel gave her to make Eternals the way she wanted that that convinced him to actually sign on and do this. So take that for what it's worth. But we've talked in the past about Marvel and directors sometimes coming into conflict about creative vision. You know, maybe it sounds like with a little more experience and sort of a proven track record, they're letting some of these filmmakers kind of you know, turn it loose a bit. So yeah. That makes me very interested to see what we get. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's obvious that certain ideas, and if there are clashes, there's certain, um, I get, th- you have this room for working things out. Obviously with people like perhaps Ed Norton, um, Edgar Wright, Scott Derrickson, they were so far apart. Um, Daddy Jenkins. And Patty, well, she, oh, okay. Patty Jenkins. They were so far apart in terms of ideas and what they wanted to do that they had to go their separate ways. And that's fine. It happens, right? We, we still, we still got to move on. So um, th- they can, things can work out, but you know, I think if you listen or I, I guess sort of, listen, if you don't agree with what Marvel is trying to do with a specific character, then you just can't do it, right? You just can't do it. Like if if Marvel tells me, and let's say um, Batman is a part of the Marvel history, let's just for an example, and they tell me that Batman has to kill and murder people, and I say no, then obviously we have two different uh, versions of what Batman should be, and and we can't work together. I don't know if it's that extreme, but certainly extreme enough that they can't work together, and it's fine. Uh, so to, let us know what you think. Are you excited for Shang-Chi and Eternals? Let us know in the comment section below. Um, our last topic, I want to sort of have people understand because I'm quite confident that um, with Spider-Man 3, we're going to get a specific type of film. But because of what's going on in the news, people's focus is on something else, which is the Spider-Man multiverse, having Tobey Maguire and and Andrew Garfield, which I'm excited to see as well, but not right now. Do you think, Brian, that people's expectations of Spider-Man 3 involves Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, obviously with the announcements of uh, Alpha Molina, Emma Stone, uh, uh, Kirsten Dunst, that they're going to be the main focus of that film? Do people believe that Spider-Man 3 is going to be about them and the, the multiverse? Or people like me believe that we're gonna get we're so we're first gonna deal with the situation that spider-man is in peter park based on what um transpired in uh spider-man 2. they're gonna deal with that situation obviously there's been talks of possibly charlie cox daredevil um um, being in that film and if you think all this is going to happen in that film there's just too much going on what kind of film do you think we're going to be getting for spider-man 3 brian well i think the amount of casting announcements and the level of detail are going back into the history is definitely making people think that these characters are, are going to be more than cameos for mm-hmm. for spider-man 3 not for the kind of broader universe but mm-hmm. actually in spider-man 3 mm-hmm. i am with you i think there's a danger here you have to be very careful i mean 
the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3 suffered from being too crowded and kind of having too much going on after two really good films. And yeah. this is a lot. Like if you're actually going to build a storyline where Tom Holland has to effectively recruit Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire to sort of team up as multiple Spider-Men to go after Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina or some variant of sort of villains across Spider-Man movies that we've seen before, that doesn't feel like one movie to me. That that feels that feels like an arc of multiple films to get exactly. to that place. Now I realize into the Spider Verse, they kind of did that, but they kept the role of the other Spider Man pretty small, right? It was sort of Miles Morales was this. It was a cent, He was the central figure, and he kind of dabbled in the other. So you'd have this, but like it's not like Spider Man Noir had forty minutes of screen time, and yeah. so. I, yeah, I'm with you. Like, I'm a little bit nervous that if these are real, real parts, like co lead supporting character, all for Spider Man 3, that movie's going to be too heavy, like, just too clunky to really be great. And, like, if you're going to get all these people together with the talent they have, you want it to be great. And you want to really be super duper excited when they're all on screen. Um, but it definitely feels to me like, like I said, I, you know, this is, they're not they're not going to be on there for 30 seconds it definitely yeah. feels like whatever they have in mind is a real plan to have them part of some story a real storyline in some way i just i agree with you it, it's hard for me to believe it's going to be all in this movie and contained in this movie one thing that gives me a little hope is that apparently sony has re-upped their contract of number of films i guess with marvel that good they're going to do with spider-man i don't know if you've heard that so it makes me sort of hopeful that this takes into account the movies that it's going to take to really tell this story, right? So that's the one thing that um, has me hopeful about um, this situation. I just want pe I, I just hope people are not expecting that. And it, and 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 if it doesn't happen, let's say we get an end credit scene, fantastic. But should people be upset if Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield aren't in the movie midway into that film? Hell no. They weren't in the first or second one, and they and the second one made a billion dollars. I think people's hopes are getting too high. Their expectations are being too are, are too high for what kind of film that we're gonna be getting for Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 should continue along the path it's been going. And at the end, tease what the possibilities will be um, going forward with that 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 storyline. If they give it to us on, in Spider Man Three, I'm I'm not gonna say I'm gonna hate or anything. I, I'm just based on past films involving many characters. Not to say the Avengers, because Avengers obviously all that stuff played out over a long period of time, but with spider-man 3 and Tobey Maguire, you got to explain a lot and will that come across on screen i don't know it makes me nervous it makes me nervous the other thing i would just point out is so john watts as we mentioned has really become a go-to player for the next phase of marvel so he's doing this spider-man 3 he's also been tasked with the fantastic four film so it does beg the question if this is going to be multiple films so is he going to be doing three four five of spider-man plus doing fantastic four which presumably is not you know that's going to be an intro film that's not going to be a standalone there's going to be more than one of those if it does well yeah. now we saw you know joe and anthony russo were able to kind of do two captain america films and two avengers films but it, it's a lot for one guy to be basically running Spider-Man and Fantastic Four at the same time. And I kind of wonder, you know, if, you, if you're looking for like, what makes you a little nervous that they're gonna try to cram all this in, is Spider-Man 3 like his swan song for Spider-Man and he's gonna switch over to Fantastic Four after that. And then they kind of give Spider-Man a little bit of a break or maybe they go to a different director to kind of go, I don't know. I just pointing that out that he's, I, I have a tough time seeing him directing say three Fantastic Fours and three more Spider-Man movies. Yeah, I think going forward after Spider-Man 3 and depending on how that ends, there's certainly going to be cameos. We're going to get those um, Tony Tony Stark cameos where they, they're in it and they're involved in some aspects, but not they're not going to be the entire story. There's going to be a lot of 
a lot more um, collaboration between heroes. Um, that's what I foresee. I mean, because I know if I if based on what Kevin has done, you can sort of have the sense that he thinks of this stuff thoughtfully and wants to tell a great story and and, and he wants to enjoy it himself. I'm pretty sure if you tell him, have you watched this movie and we think it was whack? Most likely he'll probably think it was whack too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure he didn't think BVS should have been what it, because he's a fan of that of those, of those characters too. It's not like he's not a fan, right? Um, I'm pretty sure he felt BVS could have been much better. I'm pretty sure he had the same idea when Zach announced Batman. He didn't say Batman versus Superman. He just remember in the in that in that that that, that um, I don't know if it was a Comic Con. I don't know if it was a con. In the moment they just put the symbol up. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that most people thought World's Finest. Yeah, I did. I guarantee most people thought that. When I heard it was Batman versus Superman, I was like, all right, is Batman and Superman in the same film? Never been done. It's going to make crazy numbers or whatever. How much that, that movie made? Like 800. And it was a bad film, in my opinion. And it made 800. Now you got Justice League. You got the Justice League on film. Are you kidding me? How much did that make? 600. What are we talking about here? Anyway, tell us what you think about Spider-Man Three. Are you? Uh, do you think we're gonna get Spider-Man: The Multiverse into the Spider-Verse on screen with Spider-Man Three? Do or do you have similar expectations as we do? This is going to be told over time. It's not going to be given to us all in one film. Should it be given to us? Given be given to us in all in one film? Do you want it right away? Let us know in the comment section below. I don't. I want this told correctly. Um, Brian, any last words? No, I think we covered it. That was a lot. So yeah, you know, next time, next we got news always, but like one divisions, you know, a couple of weeks away. So we'll be back in sort of new MCU territory with a lot to talk about and one episode at a time. So yeah, yeah, and and that's the way you know it feels good to. Like when I was a kid and watching shows, you saw if a show came out on Tuesday, every Tuesday, eight o'clock, you wait that week to watch the next episode. And that's what's cool about it, that we're back to that. And then after it's done, you can watch all of it, which is great, too. I want to spend a day to watch The Mandalorian season one and season two again. You know, that's how great that show was. Um, but thank you once again for joining us on, on the Nerd Gen Report. We really enjoyed doing this show. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You know, when I watch other people's videos, they're always telling you in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, they have little video things in the, reminding you to hit that like button. Why? Because it's important to the people that are delivering this content. It's important for them, it's important for us, and it doesn't cost anybody anything. Just hit that like button and the subscription and the notification bell if you like what we're doing. That helps support the channel. Um, but thank you once again for joining us. Um, again, comment in the comment section below, whatever it is that you want to comment, and we'll respond. And thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.